this. All right. Good morning. Um, this is A Marvelous. Welcome to King and Queen's radio station. Also, shout out to Brooklyn radio station. Big up to DJ Shine. Thank you for being the Don Dada of this here operation. Um, Sister Dubong, um, spiritual advisor extraordinaire. Thank you so much for, um, you know, being with us and for your work. And um, I am joined by the great Mr. Harrison. How are you? Oh, I'm all right so far. That's good. That's good. So today we're going to talk about credit repair and astrology. And I just wanted to say, how are you feeling today, Mr. Harrison? So far, so good. That's great. That's great. We just did a wonderful show um, together. Yes, and I, I, I love the show, but um, in one manner, I think that I was not too prepared to provide certain sections of the scriptures that would give a, a more definitive um, backup. Well, maybe we'll have a, uh, a part two. Well, we can more than it. more than likely most definitely most definitely one of the things that um, I'd like to um, express openly is that with my faith we were discussing what is faith because it, it, part of it is a belief it is a concept it is the thought that is generated in a, a mind that has a fertile mind and there are, there are individuals who sometimes think of things but the things that they 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 um, you generated, sometimes it is not of too much value. Not undermining anybody, but then as as an entrepreneur, which I know I I am, one has got to conceive thoughts to make yourself happy. Happiness part of it is acquisition, acquiring some form of wealth, because without money you just can't survive. You're going to be talking about uh, credit. Yes, the first half of the show is going to be on credit repair, the second half on astrology. Well, the credit, let me tell you what they've done to me with my credit. Because they wanted to use me to do certain things that I do not believe in. And, of course, I'm a bit of a rebel. Of when, course, I conceive my, when I conceive my thoughts, and I know that there's accuracy in what my beliefs are. I've, I've owned several businesses. As a matter of fact, right, I still own eight corporations. Wow. But what is taking place, the big boys wanted to control me to use my corporations to launder something that I don't want to be part of. And when they couldn't bring, bring me to their standard, they used somebody else. We're talking about Eve. They use a woman. A woman is, you can't do without them, and when you have them, you still have problems. <laughs> I can't do it without a woman, I can right. assure you that. But well. they use a woman to trap me, and I couldn't believe that she was part of the operation. And then the whole thing has now buckled up on them, and what they, they thought that they could handle me and get, me, get rid of me, because one of the things that you need to have Anybody has got to do. You have to have knowledge. You have, to, you have to be wise. Definitely. And a lot of individuals, they do not take time to make a study of what's going on. What was happening to me was done in a covert manner. Everybody who I went to for assistance, they knew what was taking place. The acquisition of my properties, which was illegal, criminal, is being utilized to do something that they, they don't want the public know. And it has now reached a point where I have gathered all the information and they have to return my properties. And to return my properties, they have to pay me for all of my losses, give back my properties, not only give my property, but punitive damage. Wow. And what they had been using is the same credit. You see that credit, credit repair system? Mm -hmm. I have Lexington Law who had drawn money from me from, from 2006 to fix my credit. I well, wouldn't do it. I'm and you know what happened? I said, listen, don't touch me anymore, you know, because something is going on. You know, I got uh, several calls from them the other day. Mr. Harrison, you have been blocked. I said, didn't I tell you to take this matter into the courts? Why didn't you take it into the courts? Because they're protecting individuals in the Department of Justice who is part of the whole operation. It's criminal. Wow. It's a political issue. 
You see, I am not on the side of the Democrats. No. I'm on the side of the Republic. So you see what I'm up against? No, I, I tell you what, Miss. I think that with your situation, we should do a, a special show so we can start um, addressing some solutions for that. You well, know? right now, what, what I have been doing, I, as a matter of fact, I just received um, some books, three different books from uh, Scott Hilton and some atrocities. This credit system in America, it is one of the biggest criminal activity to keep down the black man. Because what is happening, once you don't have credit, you cannot do any form of business. And it is the means to steal your property. And what is happening, they thought they would get away. The similar thing was happening in Jamaica, and I came up here to have this matter resolved. And when I it's like jumping out of, a f out of the frying pan into fire. Now what is happening, a, a lot of individuals, their backsides are in trouble. Their asses are burning. And what is happening, they have to, because some, some individuals have, have, have been sent to prison already. Right. But there's so many. But you see, what is happening, they thought that if I became um, penniless, I would bow to them, succumb to them, and then they could manipulate me. Because let me tell you something, slavery is still going on in this country. You know? It's going on in a different form. Definitely. It was cotton, now it's cocaine. And what is happening, some of the politicians that you have up there, they are nastier than the, the hardened criminal outside here. And a lot of people don't know. Some of the individuals who are so, the oratorical individuals who have a, a gift for gab, Definitely. they will tell you everything. And everybody say, yeah, yeah, yeah. They are the biggest set of thieves. And they don't like it. I have had the officer, the inspector general, tell me, they say, Mr. Harrison, we do not want the public to know. We'll pay you. Well, Mr. Harrison, let's do this. I want to, you know, we're going to cover an episode just for your personal situation. I think I want to help other people kind of avoid certain things like you mentioned. Yeah. And I'm going to just talk about some things that kind of help them protect themselves and kind of um, get themselves on track credit-wise. So this way they can look out for things that happen like, like what you just described. Right. I can, I can give you, a, I can, I have been here from 1993 and I came up specifically to file a lawsuit back to the Supreme Court in Jamaica. And I filed it, and I won the case from 1994, and I can't get back anything. They killed the lawyer. I can help you with that. Um, for those of you, um, I, we're, we're definitely gonna discuss that. For, for those of you interested in um, improving your credit, establishing credit, um, I'm just gonna go over some basics, things that you may or may not know. Um, I think it's important to first always have a snapshot of where you stand because most people when you ask them what their credit is they'll say well i don't know it's it's horrible it sucks it's 500 or 600 and they don't really have a a clear picture of what's on there and unless you just absolutely don't care uh, i i don't think that's wise so i think the first thing uh that should be done is to know exactly what's on there at all times um when I started, you know, learning this a long time ago, I used to check it like every every two days, every day. Um, you don't have to be that excessive, but I think at least once a week or twice a week, or if you have it set up to where you have alerts, have a snapshot on what's on there because um, you never know what can be placed on there without your knowledge, especially if you move from location to location, especially if you've applied to um, different credit opportunities. Um, these things go on your record because it's a snapshot of your economic activity when you uh, solicit other institutions for uh, money that you don't have to really earn, which is credit. So with that, um, there's many ways to check your credit report. Um, these credit bureaus are a business, period. Um, you don't need credit to do business. Um, the whole credit system is just an extension of the Rockefellers and Rothschilds as a way of containing individuals and how they, s how they use commerce. And it's nothing but a monitoring system uh, based on algorithms, which is slowly dying um, thanks to the new form of money that we're going into, which I'll cover in another episode. But while we're in this slowly dying form of credit, 
Um, you can either go directly to the, the, the bureaus, TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian, and get your credit. Now, because they're a business, they have made it difficult um, for you to do this, especially get your score. Um, you're allowed one one every you're allowed one free one every year, but you run through that. So if you've used that and you need to pull your credit for free and you want to go through the bureaus, one way to get around paying for it if you've already used your one a year is to actually go directly there and actually dispute. If you go to the bureaus, they have it to where it says dispute. When you click on dispute, um, it may ask you to register. Um, and once you register and you dispute, then it'll automatically generate your report. Now, one of the credit bureaus like Experian, um, they found a way to stop that. Um, even if you dispute, they'll ask you for um, a number. Each credit report that you get has a, a report number. So Experian makes it difficult for you to get your report free without that number. You can call in and do it. Um, but you may have issues with verifying your identity. Another way is, um, even though all of these reports, if you're talking about your score, um, they're not exactly accurate in terms of credit score. Um, you know, things like Credit Karma, even the bureaus themselves, the most accurate is if you're going to a, um, a car company or if you're getting um, a mortgage or if you go through a bank. Um, because they have to have an accurate picture of where you stand in order to give you what you're asking for. But if you're not getting any one of those things, um, you can go to something you know simple like an annualcreditreport.com because all you want to do is see what's on there. You're not trying to um, see what your score is at first. You just want to see what's on there. Once you see what's on there, then you'll have a good um, picture of, of what you're dealing with. And 10 to 1, you'll have to pay for your score. Now, once you get your report, your report's going to be sectioned off into different categories, as you know. It's going to have your general personal information. Um, it's going to have your inquiries, hard inquiries, soft inquiries, the places you've lived, um, any judgments, things of that nature. Then it's going to be broken up into two sections, basically positive or negative. Now, this is important. You can have a bunch of negative items on your report and still have what's called good credit or 700 score and up because what drives your credit report is what's called trade lines. And trade lines are basically anything that reports to your credit report um, that's revolving, that's a consistent cycle of let's say 30 days and reports to the bureau in which you're accessing some kind of line of credit or you're making payments towards, like a car note. Um, so if you are paying on a car and you have a car note, that's reporting to your credit report, that's called a trade line. If you have a credit report, I mean a credit card, that credit card being that you've taken out credit and you're paying for it every month, reports every 30 days. These things are what increases your score. So the more trade lines you have, um, depending on how you use it, that is what boosts your score. Now, most people don't know how to use their credit card. The most important thing to remember when you have these trade lines is that you have to use it correctly, okay? Now, I'm going to go over, um, and I'm also going to address what you said about your situation because when you have good credit, um, a lot of people will try to use you for your credit. That's right. You know, like in your situation. I know. There are circumstances in which that's to your benefit, right? Mm -hmm. You can actually, in a sense, rent out your credit, okay? So if you have a good score, and I'll talk about that in another program, where because you have a good score, you can actually help other people that don't have a good score. Uh, uh, they can utilize your credit, yeah. and it'll increase their score. That's right. Know? by making their payments on time consistently and to show the um, operations that you stated every 30 days. Yeah, that's, that's, that's one way to keep your score high. Um, also, you could piggyback off someone else's credit that's right. and you know that'll help you out. But I'll cover the technicalities of that on another one. Now, what most people don't know is that 
even if you pay your bills on time, your credit card bills, um, that can still drop your score. And most people don't understand that. Um, they think because they pay on time that that's all they have to do, but it's not. If you were using, uh, your, credit is, your credit score is dependent on a bunch of factors. It's dependent upon how much overall credit has been given to you. It depends on how much of that overall credit you use on a monthly basis. It depends on how long you had that credit, okay? And then it depends on how much credit you have in different forms. All of those factors, imagine like a pie, and that pie is sliced up into different factors. Each one of those have a certain weight or percentage that dictates you having what's called good or bad credit. So in that pie, let's say maybe 30% of that is paying your bills on time. So if you do that regularly, then that part of the pie is correct. Now let's say that you use most of your credit. So if you have a $1,000 credit limit and you use $800 of that, even if you pay on time, that drops your score. Because part of that pie and how the algorithm is set up on credit reports is that it's not designed for you to use most of your credit. It's just not. But what happens is most people that use credit, right, they use credit because they don't really have the income to support their habits. So their habits outweigh um, their income or their expenses outweigh their income. And resources. So, resources. Uh -huh. So these situations um, cause an individual to use more credit than they're supposed to based on this credit system. And that is what we call someone with bad credit. Bad credit is uh, a product of two things. It's a product of a system that is set up for you to be trapped mm -hmm. um, based on your ignorance and based on this thing being rigged. And it's based on um, your ignorance of how the game works. And it's also based on the fact that you just don't have enough income sufficient enough for the amount of things advertised to you. So if you watch commercials and you go around and you see everyone have this, you want it too. And that forces, that doesn't force you because you do have, like Mr. Asser said before, choice. But because of some lack of discipline in the way the system is set up, you wind up using more of what you're supposed to. So this part of the show is basically going to help get around those habits even if you want something and how to use it. An example of that is if you have one credit card and that limit, let's say again, is $1,000, right? What I suggest is before you start making a certain amount of purchases, at least utilize half of that or less before you decide to buy a bunch of purchases. Because what you want to do is you want to establish a track record with each credit card that you have, right? If you're in a position to not use that credit card, what will happen is the credit card company will start soliciting you. So let's say you go three months, six months, nine months, or a year, and you just don't use that credit card. What's going to happen is you're going to get solicited to use that card. And one way that you get solicited to use that card is the credit card company will give you a credit increase. Why? Because if you don't use the card, then they don't make money. So that's one thing that you can do in order to kind of support the habits if you just like to spend and you may have a habit of overextending yourself on credit. Um, have one card in which you don't use because what will happen is you'll constantly get offers to raise your credit limit. And when that happens, before you know it, you'll have a credit line that can support your habits. Second, when you have a credit card, 
always make sure that you don't go over 50 percent of that credit limit because once you do that really if you could do 40 or 30 percent that's better the higher the amount of credit that you use you get penalized your score drops even if you pay on time so if you're a responsible person and you pay your credit card or bill on time if you're using a majority of your credit how the algorithm is set up is your score will still drop. So if you have $1,000 and you're using 700, 800, 900 of that and you're carrying that balance out of that 1,000, your score will always drop every month on time without fail. So that's what most people don't realize is that you have to do a series of things outside of paying your bill on time. Another factor that depend that increases or decreases your credit score is uh, how long you had the credit card. Uh, most people don't realize that if they have a credit card for like a, a year or less, um, that does very little to boost your score no matter how responsible you, will, you, um, you are. That you're setting up a track, a track, track record over a period. Right, exactly. You, you wanna, you never, uh, most people when they get frustrated with credit, they cut their credit card up. Don't do that. Never do that. That's, that's, yeah, it, it, lo it can lower your credit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you d don't do that. Even if you've reached your max and your score is low, doesn't matter. As long as you have a credit card, you have a trade line. Okay? And as long as you have a trade line, it is easier for you to get good credit than someone that has no trade lines. So don't cut your credit card up. If you're in a situation where... You have bad credit or you have a trade line or credit card and um, it's maxed out, you're going over the limit, you're late, and things of that nature. Um, first thing you want to do is if you're over the overall limit, you want to get it back under the limit because there's penalties to going over the limit. And these penalties on top of the interest rate is what gets you caught up in the cycle of um, worse debt and it gets you to the point of, well, I'm just going to cut this card up. No. First goal is to get it under. Even if you're $15 under that credit limit, no problem. That's step one. Step two is you want to get it down to at least 50%. But don't cut it up. Because what happens is if you cut it up, you stop paying, and then it goes into collection, and then it goes past the collection into delinquency, and then it gets closed, and then the debt is sold, what happens now is you have um, a harder negative or derogatory item on your credit, and you don't have that credit card. At least if you keep the card and you keep the account open, um, you still have a trade line that you can fix, and you can actually, because you've had it for quite some time, despite the fact that you've been late and it's derogatory, the fact that you've had it for so long balances that and it actually adds points to your credit report. So you don't want to cut the card up. That's very important. Second, um, I'm going to cover other types of items on your report besides the credit cards. You have student loans, judgments, bankruptcies, repossessions, things of that nature. Now, I assist in all of these I won't go into detail of any of those but if you're looking to repair your credit you have to attack those last because the process to do that is exhausting the first thing you want to do is go with the easiest targets and the easiest targets are basic trade lines like credit cards that's first so if you have a trade line keep it open now Another thing is, if you have bad credit, what most people do is they keep applying to every offer that comes to them. Stop doing that because how credit card companies work is they attach specific credit card offers for specific credit profiles. So if you have bad credit, you're not getting American Express. You're not getting 10 to 1 Discover. So if you get these things in the mail, or if you just feel like applying for them just because to check your chances, that's just going to make things worse because now you have more inquiries and you're going to get denied. If you have bad credit and you would like to get credit cards,
the first thing you must do is find out where are the credit cards that are for people with bad credit. Simple. If you have fair credit, you apply to credit cards for people with fair credit. If you have good credit, you apply to credit card companies for people with good credit. If you have excellent credit, then you apply for credit cards with companies that deal with excellent credit. What most people do is they'll apply in the wrong range. It's credit cards and the credit industry is very segregated. It is designed to segregate you. It is a, um, it is a modern day caste system of I'm up here and you're down there. So in order for you to play that game, if you even care about having good credit, you have to understand segregation, period. You have to accept the fact that you're segregated. Once you accept the fact that you're segregated, then you learn to stay in your lane and play in your lane. Once you learn to stay in your lane and play in your lane, then you can gradually climb up and get into the other cash systems that this credit, um, credit game puts you in. So if you have bad credit, you have to find out, and I assist with all of this, only apply to places that offer credit cards for people with bad credit. It's just that simple. That will increase your chances of getting a credit card. Now, here's the thing with that. 10 to 1 if you have bad credit. Um, there's two types of credit, right? Well, there's more, but just to keep it simple, there's unsecured and there's secured right the lower your score is and the worse your credit is your chances of getting unsecured credit is limited unsecured credit is where you don't have to put up collateral in order for a company or bank to extend you a credit limit okay all you need to do is fill out an application right that is unsecured that means that you put up nothing tangible for them to offer you credit amounts. The other type of credit is called secured credit. That is when you have to put up some form of collateral, something hard, something tangible, and in exchange for what you put up, the bank or credit card company, which is really backed by banks, offer you something, an equal amount of the collateral or hard, um, hard, I don't want to call it an asset, but the tangible thing that you put up, the credit card company gives you an equal value for it or perceived equal value. So if you go to a bank and say, I want to secure a credit card and you put up $500, right? Of course, you got to fill out an application with that because you have to be on file. They look at it and they say, okay, no problem. I'm going to give you a piece of plastic, this secured credit card, which acts just like a credit card with interest rates because you put up $500 and I'm going to give you this with a credit limit of $500 so in essence what you did was some form of bribery I give you this and you give me that but it, what they're saying is I'm going to give you this because you gave me $500 but you can't get your $500 back in less than one year and not only that because I gave you this, even though you gave me $500, I'm going to charge you interest on what I gave you. And you still have to make the minimum payment every month. And if you don't, I'm going to report your credit card um, that we gave you negative. So you have to treat this like an unsecured credit card, even though you put this money up. No problem. That's something that still works out for you, because if you can't get unsecured credit card, that is a way to get your foot in the door. Okay, that uh, it does two things. One, it establishes a trade line, which is what you need, like we said earlier, for you to increase your score. Second, what it does is it disciplines your habits, right? A, because you had to come out of your pocket and give them money. That hurts. That's discipline. B, it sells, okay, since I put this money up, and if I don't treat this card according to those terms, I can lose my $500. So therefore, I have more of an incentive and punishment to respect this secured card and treat it properly. That right there is important because now you're fixing your habits. So on your way to good credit, you're also on your way to fixing your habits, which is the 
second most important thing in playing this game is habits. The most important thing is, um, unless you're just an a individual that's just super diligent when it comes to money, um, is understanding how this game is played. Because you can play this game in a way in which it works for you. So, we have just went over how, if you have bad credit, two ways in which you can get a credit card. One way is to apply to, and I help with all of this. One way is to, if you have bad credit, only apply to places that have credit cards for people with challenged credit. Second is go to a financial institution that issues secured cards, and you tell them how much you want to put up, and based on that, that's the amount that they will issue you a secured card, and now you have this secured card which acts like a credit card, which reports every 30 days, and if you treat it properly in the ways in which I told you, only use 50% or less on your balance, pay on time, don't go over that limit, then your score will gradually increase every month or every other month. So that's very important. Now, uh, another thing to remember in terms of credit repair is that if you decide to fix your credit yourself and you decide to go over items on your credit report that you feel are incorrect or dispute items if you have a lot of negative items on your report do not dispute all of them at the same time okay only do three or less disputes or challenges on your credit report at once if you do more than that that can be considered what's called stacking the credit bureaus have gotten hip to people um, repairing their own credit. You have individuals like Lexington Law, like you said. Yeah, they should be in jail. <laughs> I, 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 I spoke, I spoke, I said, tell that man I'm going to put him in jail. Because him what, what is happening, the credit reports now mm -hmm. are also linked politically. Yes. And not only linked politically, what the politicians are doing if you say anything disrespectful about them, they utilize it, and the IRS is a part of it. Definitely. Because I have had that experience. I have, at the, I have a complaint number right now at the Barrick Street that some um, IRS did in Pennsylvania mm -hmm. from 1996. What they were planning to do, because I do not like the system, and I spoke out about it, they said I must shut up. I said, don't tell me to shut up. I'm going to talk. And when I go to some of the lawyers, the lawyers know about it. So they deprive me my constitutional rights. But what is taking place, they thought I was an idiot. And what I did with the lawyers, I put them in front of the disciplinary board. Wow. And when I put them in front of the disciplinary board, they said, my God, where you come? I said, I'm from Jamaica. Because this is what they're doing to me down here. Because they want my property to do drugs and this is the big problem now when I go to the um, the, the, the FBI he was dilly dallying with me too and I said okay I'm going to go to the um, a gentleman who is a senior investigator in the US attorney's office you know what he said to me Mr. Harrison, if you don't have money to pay the, fe the, f the f feds, nothing will be done. I said, what you said to me a while ago, sir? I said, by the way, I spoke to somebody in your office some time ago, you know, and they, they left me dangling. Could you just write down another person, name who I must go to? He said, no, don't go to that person. Go to his assistant. You know what that happen has happened? That particular man was part of the, the operation. Wow. So I put him in front of the disciplinary board and they destroyed it, the, the, the record. Janet Reno had oh. 167 pages from 1998. I didn't know what was going on. The woman I get married to is part of the operation and they can't lock her up. I say, okay, I go after Miss Mary Jo White because she's the one who was supposed to do what she was supposed to do. They, they sent me to the office of the Inspector General. I was told that, Mr. Harrison, we don't want the public to know what's going on. The Ombudsman will pay me. 17 years now. What they've been using is using my, prop my, my property to do drugs. 
Now people don't know that the Democrats are the biggest set of drug dealers. See, to <laughs> talking to you, the, the, we, we're going to... mess with me. No, I have to be fixing my own thing because I got about four or five different um, repairs. But when I go to the people for them to repair my... my they get back in touch with somebody from the Department of Justice tell them, don't touch him, don't touch him, don't touch him. Right now, if I take up my telephone, I can't make a call to Jamaica because that's where the criminal activity is. It's, it's what is happening that a lot of individuals do not know is that they have certain individuals who do their drugs, but they are protected and Im is Im immune from prosecution. Now I found out the whole thing and nobody knows what to do because uh, about four or five of them have gone to federal prison already. And there are bankers from Jamaica who have lost their banks and are up here. But bankers have lost a lot of money because some of the money that they're using now, it goes towards the, the, the uh, representatives. And I know the operation. They say I know too much. I'm a whistleblower. See, this is this is why we need a show on um, on on corporate it structure stinks. like like trusts and it LLCs. Stinks. Yeah, we, we're gonna have a, we're gonna have a show on that. Um, so that's I'm gonna wrap the credit section up because I'm gonna get into a little bit about astrology. But if any of you ever have any questions or need you know any kind of credit you know advice or consultation. Um, Feel free to contact me, you know, go through Kings and Queens Radio, um, contact Sister Dubong, you know, to tell you how to get in contact with me. And I'd be glad to assist you because it's very important. Um, and once you know it, it's definitely something that you never forget. And it's something that you can always do no matter what credit situation you're in. And you can also help others. And with that. Um, I, I'm with the right person right now uh, with the astrology because we are in Aquarius. Did your birthday pass yet? No, my birthday is on the 13th. Oh, that's February, my son's February, February. That's my son's birthday. Is that so? February. Wow, you see, <laughs> see symbols. It's all about the symbols. That is my son Rasheen's birthday, February 13th, day before Valentine's Day. My sister's February 12th. Is that so? Yeah, my brother's February 15th. So I grew up with a. Uh, a lot, a lot of, of Aquarians, Aquarians and, and Gemini. They are the most dangerous. At the oh world. man, that's an understatement. They, they are, we, I am being regarded as the most rebellious in the village. I told him in Jamaica, I said, listen, if you mess with me, I'll go to America and I'm going to explain everything you're doing down here. And of your night from 90, and I can't go back. And they're still using my properties in all tries to do drugs. See? 84 Main Street, Shirley Anderson, doing drugs. That's pure, um... You Dirty, can't nasty politics. It is, it is, it is. But you, you can't, you cannot um, control Aquarius. Um, the Aquarius energy is designed to disrupt. Period. <laughs> it is this, that is the see astrology works off energies, right? The goal is to to learn the lesson that each energy has because this world exists of pure energy, right? Some impure Good energy. energy, bad energy. Right, if you want to quantify it. What the purpose of astrology was, was our, the ancestors understood, see, the first lesson in life for human beings was symbols, right? They looked at their environment, they looked at their surroundings, and they started seeing things around them. So they attached symbols to it, and they noticed that certain occurrences that happened around them started to happen around the same time. So based on their living and their survival, they designed symbols and systems around these things that they've seen occur on a cyclical basis, whether That's it's right. a certain cyclical. star. It's cyclical. It's definitely, definitely cyclical. And based on that, they established a system, of many systems, in which they can operate and live in harmony and govern themselves and prepare themselves for the forces of nature, use the forces of nature, and not be completely destroyed by the forces of nature. And one of those systems that they used was astrology, their relationship with um, the stars, this, the stellar relationship, the cosmic relationship, and things of that nature. So when you hear someone say, my sign is this or your sign is that, basically what is being done is they're just isolating an energy that exists naturally by being a human being in relation to your environment. P 
period because the whole basis of the astrology as we know it, the common astrology as we know it, and I won't get into the technical names, is based on your relationship with the seasons, right? Yeah. And your relationship with things that happen on a consistent basis. So the goal is to learn each of these lessons that we call zodiac signs for your purpose and benefit. It's just that simple. So, for instance, if let's just say I am a person that's emotional and always emotional and I'm always attached and clingy, right? That might mean that I might need to learn some Aquarian energy because Aquarians deal with non-attachment, right? They deal with, let's just look at the part of the body that they represent. Aquarians deal with the wrists, the lymph nodes, the ankles, things of that nature. Now, if you look at the wrists and the ankles, right, they really don't get the attention that the part of the body that they're attached to, right? They're, they're, they pretty much are the intermediary between the arms and the hands. They're the intermediaries between the feet and the legs, right? But without the wrists and the ankles, you can't walk. And you won't have hands. You'll just have hands that's not attached to your body or arms with no hands. So what does that mean in terms of energy and how we can use it? And what does that mean in terms of Aquarius? That means that Aquarians are, um, they're, they're, they're a bridge between the individual and humanity. See, Aquarians are communal people. They're community types. So they're not meant to have that type of emotional connection on an individual level because Aquarians are uh, worldwide humanitarian purpose-driven individuals. So if you're trying to connect with them solely on an individual basis, then they, they may have a tendency to look down at you because you're missing the picture. You have to, Aquarian energy represents higher community humanitarian purpose, period. And they are the sign that follows Capricorn. Capricorn deals with structure, Capricorn deals with time, and Capricorn deals with responsibility. Aquarius follows that, which means they're the ones that tear down structure. They, don't, they tear down time, barriers, and they set new trends. So while everybody's going right, Aquarians may go left, just because because that's what they represent. They represent you not being comfortable in what surrounds you, and that sometimes you have to do things that's completely opposite of everything else in order for you to learn a higher purpose, in order for you to contribute to humanity. Sometimes you have to be stripped of your comfort zones, and you have to be stripped of what's familiar to you, so therefore you can actually see a bigger picture. That is what Aquarians represent. And if you look at your body, that is what your wrists and your ankles represent, right? In order for you to actually have mobility with your hands, you have to actually um, use the wrists. And by using the wrists, you start to extend your hands beyond their comfort zone, right? When you reach and grab something, when you curl it and things of that nature, you're actually doing something and many times that your hands are not normally used to doing outside of just grabbing. The same with your ankles. You understand? That's what Aquarians represent. Doing things outside of the normal way in which we look at things. So right now we're in what's called sun in Aquarius and moon in Cancer. So that means that during this Aquarius cycle, um, you may get in, into a lot of conversations or circumstances in which it might seem that the people around you are kind of cold or unfeeling or um, not empathetic to what you're going through. That's basic Aquarian energy. That's showing you not to be so attached to certain things and to look at things from a detached standpoint so you can come to a more logical picture. Aquarians are the scientists. They're the scientists of the zodiac. So if you're dealing with science, you're dealing with things that are tested and proven and you're dealing with innovations and new territory. That is what Aquarians represent. So during this cycle, um, I suggest that you actually apply these things. Be a little bit more scientific 
and your approach to things. Do some things that you normally would not do. If there's areas in your life that you feel burdened by responsibility, that you feel um, you don't have enough time to do, or if you feel that you've been doing the same routine, use some of this Aquarian energy and do something completely um, what might seem like erratic, but it might be something on a higher plane that's calling you to get out your comfort zone because that's what Aquarians represent. Aquarians tear down unneeded restrictions, unneeded barriers, you know? And Aquarians also rule electricity. And that is why, if you notice, since the 1900s, the most dominant form of communication has been electricity. Um, television, computers, internet. We get most of our information from electronics. That's an Aquarian, um, that's Aquarian energy, period, plain and simple. So that means that everything that we're moving towards now is electricity, right? So anything electrical um, is an Aquarian vibe. Incidentally, I am an electrical contractor. <laughs> wow. You see what I mean? That, you see how that works? That's the universe right there. Yeah. I didn't know Mr. House was Aquarius. Yeah. And he's in the like, see that? Electrical. But, but <laughs> and I do buildings, I put up structures. How about that? See, the, all that, but see, that's the energy that we're in. We're, as we're moving towards Aquarius, right, our knowledge is going to be quicker because Aquarians deal with sharp intellect and quick intellect. You could say something to an Aquarius 10 to 1, and they'll get it instantly because they're also an air sign. Air signs deal with intellect. There's four changes of thought. Um, there's I understand slash I don't understand. There's no excuse. There's yes and there's no. Human beings, in, when they relate to each other and when they get into situations, they use one of these changes of thought. And if you are approaching a certain sign, now of course it depends on your birthday because we have many signs in us. What I'm talking about is just the raw energy. So when you're dealing with Aquarius as an air sign, Air signs represent I understand or I don't understand, period. If you're coming at them with anything else, they're going to look at you like you're crazy. So if you want to talk to an Aquarius or a Gemini or a Libra and you want to have the highest, best form of communication, come to them with an understanding, don't understanding type of vibe and you'll see a clear difference. If I want to talk to an Aquarius or Libra, I'm going to have to hit them with some understanding. If I come at them with a flat out no without a reason, it's going to be an issue. If I tell them, you know, if I get on them for no excuse and something they did, they're going to question me. If I just automatically say yes, they may run over me. So I have to ask them, well, what did you mean by that? Please explain. Those are air sign, Aquarian, uh, Gemini, Libra type of responses that will help you get to a higher level with them. Now, also, we're in terms of Aquarius, if you notice right now, what's big is Uber, Airbnb, um, Donald Trump. All of these things are signs of Aquarian energy because if you notice, all of these things, what they did was they disrupted, right? Uber in New York, the, the New York Taxi Commission just celebrated 100 years. They've been in New York for 100 years. So that means for almost 100 years, they have had a complete domination of communal transportation in New York City. But what happened? Uber came and Lyft came and they use electronics and they use computers and they use apps and they completely, almost completely crushed um, New York taxis. Why? Because they refused to adjust. They refused to adapt to the technology that we're in. They refuse to adapt to the coming age of Aquarius and that energy. So Aquarian energy said, okay, you're not going to change. I'm going to destroy you. So now Uber is king, Lyft is king, and what happened? Um, the taxis now have their own apps, and they're following Uber. <laughs> so that's the power of the Aquarius. Trend. They set the trend. They set the Aquarius as trendsetters. Set the trend. They're, they're also eccentric. Some people might call them weird or eccentric. I've been to a lot, a lot. Of a lot of <laughs> But you know what? Eccentricity. <laughs> Eccentricity. That's an Aquarian um, keyword. But the reason why is because they don't operate off the present. They operate off the future. 
You know what I mean? In, in order for... Go back for, to the faith thing. Go back, <laughs> go back to the faith. It's ironic that Aquarian <laughs> key phrases, I know. they. F- <laughs> that's funny. But back to the wrist, if you notice, the hands, right, they cannot move without the wrist. So that means that the wrist have foreknowledge before the hand does of what the next motion is going to be, just like the ankles, right? When the brain sends a message to move your foot, the ankle gets it first before the foot. That's Aquarius. They are future individuals. A lot of Aquarians, they might just have visions. You know what I mean? They don't move to present things. They move to their own drum. So while we're in this Aquarian phase, I suggest um, for maybe the next two weeks, we start to do things that might seem a little weird and eccentric. You might, you might get a, the energy might be in your favor. You know, follow some of the Aquarians up until maybe February 18th and see where that gets you. Because right now, um, this is where we're, where we're going until we get into Pisces, which is around um, the 18th or 19th, around that time. And what's coming up this Wednesday you ever heard the phrase "once in the blue moon"? Yeah. Well, As a matter of fact, um, uh, by about six o'clock um, later on, six o'clock, six a.m. this morning, there's supposed to be that extra um, blue moon that is supposed to be shown in the west here. Yeah, yeah. The Wednesday it'll be all over here. Um, this, th- this morning, I think. No, probably th- this morning. Probably, probably some. This parts. morning, yes. Yeah, yeah. Between. S- between si- five thirty and, and seven o'clock. See, so that, that energy is coming. The, we yeah. have a um, blue moon, and what is the blue moon? The blue moon is anytime you have two full moons in the same month. That second it's moon is called moon. The, uh, it's, right. It's known as a super moon. Super moon. This is a super moon. A super blue moon. blood moon. Yeah. Um. So this is an extra powerful moon. So I suggest. Um, today and tomorrow and Thursday, you get exactly what you want to happen. You get the exact petitions, your exact desires, any issues you have. You put all that on the table. If you pray, whatever it is that you do, rituals, whatever the case, this is the time to do it and do it boldly and do it ceremoniously because the energy that's here um, is more favorable to give power to what it is that you're asking for than in other times. So I suggest you take advantage of the next three days. Um, get your petitions in, get your ceremonies in, and get your actions in. And whatever you're going to do, do it boldly and do it eccentrically, and you might be surprised what you get back. So with that, Mr. Harrison, any any last words before we? Well, um, one of the things I harbor on a lot is that <coughs> I believe that there is a thing known as prayer and a belief, and you've got to believe in some. You've got to believe in something. You just can't just exist. You're like a leaf that the wind hit and it has no direction and you buffet it here you buffet it there you got to have some form of a direction you need a direction in life you got to set a goal I believe in setting goals some people say I have too many goals but then again um, if there is space to perform why not perform Maybe you should have faith and just forget the goals and just do it. <laughs> well, it's a part of it. It's a part of it. And never give up. Because once you falter, sometimes when you, f- when you fall down, sometimes you have difficulty getting up. That's very true. Getting it's up the worst is, thing. It's yeah. the worst thing. Not knowing how to make a move. Because the what, what was happening to me, I was kept in the dark. I w- had people who were smiling with me, and they were stabbing me at the same time. They knew something that I didn't know, and then I said, you know, something is taking me. And you've got to keep records. Yeah. Do not throw away your records. Have records, because with records you can know what occurred at this particular time, 
you look forward to a reoccurrence or if the, the occurrence does not take place you say something is short or why did it happen and some of the things some some sometimes you have to be by yourself do you know you've got to be by yourself and search yourself that by yourself time sometimes you're in the dark and your eyes are wide open but you are, you are o your eyes are opening not seeing anything but it opens up your faculties True. and this is one of the things that you have to um, be mindful of remember what some what somebody said to you what is happening to me I'm going back up to 1966 67 certain things have occurred and I said but this thing happened in Jamaica and it's happening to me up here there is a connection symbols and when you get the connection you know where it's coming from that's true politics is dirty and sometimes when they when they can they can use you they destroy you wow that was the best way to end that that's deep yep i appreciate you yeah Definitely. i'm telling you you know how many people that at one stage, I had put 19 lawyers in front of the disciplinary board in Pennsylvania. And the guy said to me, where are you from? Nobody's ever done this. I said, is that so? I said, I'm from Jamaica. And some of the guys in Jamaica, they have more sense than you up here. <laughs> <laughs> and they're lawyers. And I put their backside in front. You know what they did with the paperwork? They destroyed it. Wow. And I asked them, I said, where is it? And I called back, uh-uh, Mr. Harrison. You touch a con, you cut, you touch a aorta, and people are scared of you. You know what I had to do? I go and I, I buy, I get get the the government printing office and get the statutes of the area, city statute, and all of the statutes, and I read them up. And when they come at me, I say, hold on a moment. What do you think you're doing? That application that you have against me is fraudulent enough. If you don't do what I tell you, that you go, you either do join up the guys, or I take your license. Mm. When I put the 19 lawyers in front of the discipline, I was told at the Southern District, Mr. Harrison is not 19 lawyers, you know, he's 60 odd lawyers. They're scared of you. And if some more lawyers in in New York to start do some things, and I said, tell me something. You know who you're dealing with. You have a law license, I will take it from you. This is they ganging up. <laughs> wow, we we're gonna we're gonna continue and yeah. do a show just on your your situation. No, it, 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 it's we're wrap and up you know now. what it, you know what is taking, you know what's hurtful? A lot of the individuals who lock themselves in to the Democrats. They are proletarians. You know what a proletary is? Pro Pro proletary is an old Roman system where they use right. the people to provide wealth for the big boy. Mm -hmm. And this is what they're doing. Marx. Marx, Marx and Lenin. But on that, thank you all for joining us. We greatly appreciate it. We hope you enjoyed. We hope you learned. Please give us your feedback. If you need any consultations on credit, please let me know. Astrology readings as well. Um, thank you, Mr. Harrison, yep. as well. A pleasure. We're going to definitely talk I about impart that. Impart this to other individuals who really don't know. Yes. And with that, um, thank you, Sister DeBong. Thank you, uh, DJ Shine. Please tune in to um, BrooklynStation.com as well as KingandQueenRadio.com. And, Queen Radio .com. and uh, we'll see you soon. Peace.